Today, let's start with an application of geometric series, actually, to a discrete annuity. And there's going to be no probability in statistics here. We're going to assume you live long enough to get the entire series of payments. An annuity is a series of payments. We've talked about continuous annuities where you're getting money every second of every day, which, you know, in reality only applies to big companies like Amazon or something. They're the only kinds of entities that are getting money every second of every day. But as a, as a generalization, uh, it's kind of nice to think about because it can involve nice formulas. But let's say you're, it pays um, $1,000 at the start of every year for 40 years. And yes, no probability here. We're going to pretend in our mind here that um, you live the entire time. If you get this annuity starting at age 65, you live to be 105, you get all 40 payments. Although actually, if you're getting 40 payments at the beginning of each year, the last payment is actually at the beginning of the 40th year, which is 39 years after age 65 when you turn 104. Our goal is to find the present value of the annuity, PV. But I do have to speci specify some interest rate, say at a 4% uh, continuous annual interest rate. Continuous annual interest rate. The present value is important because effectively what it represents is at least if, if the 4% interest rate is kind of the going rate, it's kind of like the fair price for the annuity. It's what you should pay right now at a 4% interest rate to be equivalent to all the payments that you get. That's one way to think of it. Another way to think of it is you're going to pay some money now to get a rate of return and it's the price you should pay right now to get a 4% continuous annual rate of return. Now, whoever's selling you the annuity, they want to make money. And so they probably only sell you this annuity if they could take your money that you pay them right now and invest it at a higher interest rate. And they have to be confident that they can do that. It gets complicated because in real life, there's things like the stock market that goes up and down. There's things like crypto that goes up and down, even more extreme than the stock market. I bought some crypto a few years ago. Okay. It's actually a bad time to buy. I, I, I bought a thousand dollars worth. Okay. Why did I do that? Well, because buying a thousand dollars worth of crypto, if it really goes up crazy, that's really good, even in investing a thousand dollars. Yeah, I could crash and I could get nothing back. But yes, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. But in the big scheme of your life, it's actually not that much money. So I didn't mind losing $1,000 if necessary for the chance of doing that. So that, that's kind of like the only time in my life I've gambled, so to speak. But uh, I, I feel like there's a pretty good chance it'll go up over the long run. So I think it's a pretty good bet. Um, it did go down right away. It, it went down like 20 bucks in the first few minutes. I was watching it. And it went down by over half within the first few months. but Recently, here in 2024, it's been going up. So now my money is like doubled almost, I think. So it's 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 going well now, but it could crash again. Who knows? Anyway, that's all side comments. Let's think about this more tame situation of getting this fixed income. And again, that's why you purchase annuities in general, or why some people do, is that you're looking for guaranteed income. It may not be as much income as you want, but it's guaranteed. So you get these thousand dollar payments starting at time zero and going through time 39 as the last payment. What's the present value of all these things? It's not integral, right? This is not a continuous income stream. It's a discrete income stream. 
we have to find the present value of each individual payment and then add up all the results. The first payment's already at time zero. So its present value is itself. Second payment is time one, one year in the future. What's the present value here in the at time zero? Because of the continuous interest rate, I use E. It's going to be E to the negative 0 0.04 times one year. The next one at time two needs to come back in time by two years. Multiply 1,000 by E to the negative 0 0.04 times two. Et cetera. Keep going. The very last payment of $1,000 is at time 39. It's time 39, but it's the 40th payment. Multiply 1,000 by e to the negative 0 0.04 times 39. I hope you're at the point now where you look at that and say, hey, that's a geometric series. It's a geometric series that makes us very happy. We like geometric series. Because there's a first term, certainly that happens with any series. But there's also a common ratio. That's what makes this a geometric series. There's a constant. I can multiply each term by to get to the next term. It's e to the negative 0 0.04. The common ratio, which the book calls x, but I like to call r. r or x, common ratio, is e to the negative 0 0.04. Why is it called a ratio? Because you can also think of it as taking any term but the first one and dividing by the preceding term to get a ratio. And it simplifies. Like if you take this divided by that, you get some cancellation that simplifies to e to the negative 0 0.04. You also need the number of terms for this finite geometric series. It's not 39, it's 40. So we now use the formula for a finite geometric series. A times one minus, I'll go ahead and use X like the book does, X to the N over one minus X. A thousand times one minus E to the negative 0 0.04 to the 40th over one minus E to the negative 0 0.04. Go ahead and compute this now. E to the negative 0 0.04 to the 40th is about 0.2. I hope you also realize, looking at this, that you could also use properties of exponents to multiply those exponents and write this as e to the negative 1.6. Let's check that. e to the negative 1.6 is the same thing. I take one minus that and multiply by a thousand. So I'll do that in one step here. A thousand times one minus the previous answer gives you a numerator of 798.1. Before I divide by this number to find the final answer, let's guess what's going to happen here. We're getting 40 payments of $1,000 at the beginning of each year, $40,000 total. But remember, present values are smaller numbers, smaller than 1,000. Each one of these numbers, except for the first one in this sum, is smaller than 1,000. So we have to get an answer smaller than, than 40,000. But it will be significantly bigger than 798 because e to the negative 0 0.04 is just barely bigger, barely less than 1.9 something. One minus it is going to be close to zero. So it'll be still fairly big, but not up to 40,000. Oops. Divide by one minus e to the negative 0 0.04. It's about 20,000. 20, $20,354.30 as the present value of this unit. By the way, another interesting thing to do here is imagine what the infinite sum approaches. As n goes to infinity, this goes to a over 1 minus x. And it does converge, by the way, because x in absolute value is the absolute value of e to the negative 0 0.04 is e to the negative 0 0.04 itself. 
which is less than one. It's about 0.9 something. So it converges. It converges to that. And what is that number? It would be 1,000 divided by 1 minus e to the negative 0 0.04. About 25,503. What this means has implications as well. That's the value of the infinite sum. It also means any finite sum, any finite present value for any number of these payments is never going to get bigger than that. If you get a thousand dollar payments forever or for a really, 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 really long time, you and your descendants over hundreds of years, the present value of the, all, the, all those payments right now is, is never bigger than this. So you should never pay more than that at a 4% interest rate. Now, if the interest rate changes, then the answer changes, but at a 4% interest rate, that's what it, the answer would be. Let's double check this with Mathematica as well. Let's go ahead and use the summation sign in Mathematica though, for this series here. Hit the summation button. K goes from one to 40 payments, it's 40 payments. These payments are of the form 1,000 times e to some negative 0 0.04 power times something. It's not k, it's k minus one. Because think about it, when k equals one, that means k minus one is zero, e to the zero is one, that corresponds to the 1,000 when k equals one. When k equals two, Two minus one is one. You get e to the negative 0 0.04, just like we did here. That one right there is two minus one in the summation of Mathematica. This one is two is three minus one. The last one is 40 minus one, which is 39. Same answer, $20,354.30.